zone. Okay. How did you feel about what he said about you on TakeOver? Like, the fact that he said that Horses Rhyme was better than yours and the whole lame. And uh, how did you take that, man? I, well, I looked at it from another perspective than the average fan. I looked at it from basically where he was looking at it at. Mm -hmm. You know, we it was like I was sitting there right with him. Like, mm -hmm. okay, now you know I'm going to answer back. And it's cool. People are into this. It would have been whack if people wasn't into it. But people were into it. It made people stop and say, whoa, what's going on? So I said, this is good. And now, it, you know what I'm saying? Now, after the takeover, how did people react to you in the streets? What was the vibe that you were receiving? Was it, go get them? Was it, yo, you're looking kind of crazy right now? Like, how did people react to you? I mean, I, I think it was more like, yo, you got to get to, even if they was being fake about it. It was like, yo, you got to go get them. And it was like, yo, um... Um, you know, you gotta you gotta get at this dude because this dude got a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, psyched out on it. So you know you gotta get at this dude. Okay. I know you're in the streets, and I also know that after takeover, you must have heard in the streets that cats were counting you out and saying, "Yo, Nas is a rap. He destroyed this cat." How did that make you feel? Man? Did I mean, it get I, you angry? What, not what at all. I, you know why? Because I never heard that, but I knew people were saying it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to hear it. I already know. I already know what the streets are saying. People was like, yo, dog, don't answer this dude back. You ain't even got to do it. It's, he's beneath you. But, you know, in reality, that's not the truth. I have to come to war. If you call me out in war, I have to come. We fighting for a, a serious business. So I had to come to war and, and, and bring it. Did you feel you were fighting for some type of title? Did you feel you were fighting for your respect? What exactly was on the line to Nas when this whole thing happened? Basically, dude was the type that would say something about me, like take over, and really wanted to bask in his glory, and really feel like he was the king of the world because he got Nas out the way. And really feel like, all right, since Nas is out the way, I'm gonna kick him while he's down. Mm -hmm. Had no idea, when I dropped General, it wasn't about him, it was for people who were sleeping and think I wasn't gonna make any record. Mm -hmm. And I basically told him what I was gonna do at the end of the general record which was what which for the was people who missed focus plan your attack then you move you don't just react out of um and you don't hate your enemy mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i basically told them all the uh, lessons of war in in general i told them what i was going to do where did you receive that frame of mind or that training from i, I received it in the streets of queensbridge projects I, I received it from my pops and i was re i received it from reading okay there it is man i'm, I'm gonna let nas answer phone calls because i know that you Y'all got a lot to ask him, man. You want to holler at him? The number is 1-800-223-9797. We'll be back with more of Nas in a minute. Hang around. It's Hot 97 blazing hip-hop and R&B. Colorado, you know how we do it, man. We just make it happen for you and yours, man. Okay, so you know the deal. 1-800-223-9797. Fat Man's from Big Colorado. And in the building, as usual, we got my mans in them. Nas. There you go, Nas is in the building, still with us, still rocking, still taking faxes and all that stuff like that. Once again, I'm still here. I love y'all. You're here, man. dog. I can't, I can't give it up. Did you feel the world in the streets were against you when the whole thing went down? Nope. I just knew that they didn't understand. I knew they were blinded by fake lights. Mm -hmm. I knew they were being um, bamboozled, hoodwinked. I knew that it was a um, false prophecy, and, and I knew it, was, it wasn't right. I knew, it was just, I, I knew that I would come back for them. Is the stuff that you said on uh, Ether fact or fiction? I can't think of any fiction because it wouldn't have held any weight. Mm -hmm. um, I have to think of it being fact and just coming from my perspective. Calling on my brother because I do love him. He's a great artist. And, you know, I just had to come from be real about it. What did you think of the comeback song that he did, Super Ugly? Your honest opinion. My honest opinion. When I heard my track come on. You got yourself a gun, and he mm. was going, uh-oh, like Nelly. I said, oh, my God, he can do anything he wants and watch the fans, like, decide for him because he knows how to manipulate the situation. Mm -hmm. I started listening to the rhymes, and, and and he wasn't really saying nothing. You know, he said he's a $100 million man and a lot of, you know, stuff that didn't mean nothing. He was just trying to rhyme and, I guess, assassinate the character. But when he put on a Dre beat and started going into my baby mom's, Mm -hmm. I said, oh, man, she's, he's pissing her off, and he's really sounding emotional, and um, he really wants to, he's really, this is the biggest disrespect he feel like he can do. Mm -hmm. He didn't feel like he could come at me with science in his rhymes. He felt like he had to come with disrespect, and I felt like it was disrespect. We all knew it. The whole crew knew it. We was, we was bugging. We was laughing. You know what I'm saying? I called my baby mom. She was laughing. Mm -hmm. She didn't hear it, but she heard about it, and um, it was like, wow, this dude really overdid it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It was like... Okay, you know, this dude, where he's wrong is, you know, he's really, you know, talking about baby and this and that and that. 
I mean, how could you? It, it, let's be real, man. I did ether to him. I got into his soul, and it's obvious that I broke his spirit. Mm -hmm. He was on the radio the next day with a broken spirit, sounding like crazy, he dog. Was, you felt you felt he was rattled by I the whole felt, thing. I felt sorry for Jay, and I prayed for him, and, and me, and I asked a few of my people to pray for him because I felt that his spirit was really broken. Did you know that Jay was messing with your baby mother, or was it something new to you? She told me a long time ago, we all knew he didn't like me, and so she told me mm -hmm. that she had hollered at him or he hollered at her. I wasn't mm -hmm. clear on the situation. Whatever that was going on between them was none of my business. And you got to remember, I'm out here making records, and I'm pimping, and I'm hitting everybody from here to there, mm -hmm. all these chicks, and I'm feeling like, you know, at this point in my life, I feel like that was a waste of time. And I'm sure she feels like... Her life was a waste, a, waste, um, a waste of time when she was out there. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, she's a beautiful woman, and she could do whatever she want. She's in she's control of her situation, and I'm in control of mine. Of course, homeboy got to use that against me. What else is mm -hmm. he going to do? Has this affected your relationship with your baby mother? That's my homegirl. You think it's going to affect the child later on? Absolutely not. My daughter, Destiny, is executive producer of my album, and she knows I'm a king. She knows I'm a true king, and she knows that when she, if she listens to his album, she can hear how much he shouted out her daddy and how much he was on me. It's very obvious. This is written down in the books for life. Mm -hmm. So I think she could be very proud of her pop and just say, hey, my pop was gangster and mommy was definitely gangster. I got two more questions for you. What do you think about Jay-Z saying you should write him a check for resuscitating your career? Is he going to reimburse me for Blueprint? Wow. Is he going to reimburse me for Blueprint? I mean, take over, come on, now let's be real. Is he going to reimburse me and then have the nerve to be mad that I'm dropping the album, responding, and thinking I owe him something? How dare you think I owe you something when you made a response to me? What do you rather I crawl up somewhere under a rock and die and never answer you back? So when I answer you back, your excuse is, you owe me a check, Nas? That's not an easy way out, baby. You got to deal with Ether for the rest of your life. Wow. Being that this thing went directly to radio in the court of public opinion, do you think that cats would take your side as far as having the hottest joint when Jay-Z is actually at the top of his game right now? I didn't care. It was like somebody's going to be like, I'm with Nas. So if the radio had rigged the votes to try to George Bush me and say that he was, we was neck and neck, which was a lie, I knew it was a landslide. But if they would have, I would have took it like a man, which I felt he should have. And the next day he said he don't know if we could be friends. I think that's very emotional. We, we got to be men about this. Can you be friends with him or this is just something that can't be fixed? Yeah, I mean, Jay ain't did nothing to me. You know, we, we had fun. We went at it. It was a battle of the minds. It was for hip-hop. Mm -hmm. It was the biggest thing of the 21st century in hip-hop. Mm -hmm. I mean, why would I be mad at this brother? That's what I understand. Okay. I got love. Let's wrap it up, man. Thank you for coming through. All right. I want you to stick around and answer some phones. That's cool? No doubt. Nas is going to answer phones. All you got to do is call us right now. You know the number. That's how it's going down. 1-800-223-9797. Oh, man. Wow.